Hello YouTube, I'm Toby and uh, today I'm going to show you how to may build a, uh, a basic computer. So um, why don't we get started uh, introducing the uh, components for this uh, particular build. Well first off we have our case. Uh, this is pretty much just a stripped down uh, ATX case. Uh, I really didn't feel like uh, buying a new case for this build so uh, I hope you can live with this but this will be uh, plenty to uh, show you the basic uh, workings of the whole thing. And this is our power supply. This is a 550 watt uh, Raptor XX uh, power supply. Uh, this is quite overkill for this build. Um, for a regular office or basic home computer you're not going to need much more than uh, maybe 200 watts. But this is what I had lying around so it is what we're going to use. And this is our motherboard. Uh, it is a mini ITX motherboard so it is quite small but it does fit in the uh, standard ATX case so there are no issues there. Your motherboard usually comes with a, um, a shield, I.O. shield it's called for the I.O.s over here and it usually comes with a couple of uh, SATA data connectors. Yeah. And here we have our Sempron 6250 uh, processor. This processor is an APU so there's an integrated graphics chip inside it which is, my, which is uh, why I did not include a uh, dedicated graphics card in my uh, lineup. Also, usually when you buy a processor, there comes a heatsink and a fan with it. And this one has thermal paste pre-applied on the bottom, so there's no reason to panic over thermal paste when you're using a Simpron processor. This here is a 3.5 inch hard disk drive. Uh, this is in a case that fits the, um, well, the general computer case. And this one has a SATA data and a SATA, data, a SATA power connector. And this is just a simple uh, F8 uh, Arctic 80mm fan, uh, just to provide some airflow in our uh, in our case. We've also got the two sticks of RAM. Uh, these are only two gigabyte each, so don't mind the uh, scribes, the little letters here. Um, there are uh, three, 13, uh, 33 uh, megahertz, which is what our uh, processor and motherboard uh, need. And just so we can connect to the internet, we are uh, including a TP wireless uh, adapter in the uh, P single PCI Express slot. Alright, let's get to uh, assembling our motherboard. The first first thing you want to do is lift this uh, little arm up right here. Then you take your uh, processor out of its uh, packaging. Now that you have your processor out, you want to be very very careful not to bend these little pins because if they bend, your process is pretty much toast. To line up the processor correctly, there's a little uh, triangle here and uh, down here in the corner there's also a triangle you want to line those up and don't force your processor in it should fall in just just on its own and then you just want to close this up and your processor is installed alright now it's time to put the heatsink on uh, keep in mind that some heatsinks have uh, different mounting mechanisms so it's very important that you uh, read the instruction manual just to make sure uh, of how your uh, heatsink works. Alright, so now our heatsink is on. You want to take the uh, little power connector for the fan right here. Find the one that's uh, the connector that says CPU fan, and the one here is right here. And you pretty much just want to uh, put it on, making sure to line up the little uh, locking mechanism here. Now, the CPU fan header on this motherboard is a four pin, and this is only a three pin uh, connector right here. Now once this is done, uh, some people have different preferences, some just leave the wires out. Uh, I like to bundle it up a little bit and then just take a zip tie to uh, keep it nice and tidy. Alright, so next up we have our, our RAM installation. These are our RAM sockets and we just want to open these up just like that. And then we take a RAM stick, making sure to line the little notch up with the little uh, well there's a little bar down here and you just want to slide it in making sure that it's seated all the way just like that and then you want to take stick number two and do the exact same thing and then our RAM is installed and our motherboard is pretty much ready for installation into the, uh, the case itself now before we uh, install the motherboard itself we're gonna have to install the I.O. shield and it goes in this little uh, slot down here. Now you want to make sure to uh, pay attention to the orientation of your motherboard when you plug it in. 
I know mine is supposed to go on just like this. And it pretty much just snaps in to place. Be careful because some of these uh, IO shields uh, can be pretty sharp. Uh, the metal on here is pretty thin and pretty uh, tough, so make sure not to cut your fingers on those. Now comes time to install the uh, motherboard, and I like to handle mine by the heat uh, of the uh, sorry the heat sink on the uh, on there. Now that the motherboard is seated, we want to screw it in place with uh, some proper fitting screws. Uh, on this particular motherboard, there are four screws, and they pretty much just go in every uh, corner. But if you have a full size ATX and a motherboard, it might extend uh, down and out you'll need uh, some more screws but uh, yeah if you're in doubt this is pretty clearly uh, marked in your uh, motherboard uh, instruction book. All right now it's time to install a power supply uh, in this case uh, the power supply goes up here and the exhaust comes out here now on the other side, side there are four screws you'll need. Uh, these will be included with your power supply or your case maybe. But they're pretty much just a uh, simple thing to screw in. So it's not that difficult. Uh, you'll know, the, know where they're supposed to be. Now comes the fun part, connecting the uh, PSU to the uh, motherboard. And I like to find the little four pin connector and connect it uh, up here. There's a little four pin, well, a secondary four pin connector. Just like that, easy as that. That's for your CPU power. As some other boards have eight pin connectors, but this one has a four pin. And down here is your motherboard power. And you pretty much just want to plug the uh, connector that fits in here. And just like that, easy as cake. Now, you may want to take care of these cables, uh, try and manage them uh, to the best of your ability. Now, when it comes to airflow in your case, uh, mostly you'll see an exhaust fan, but my uh, little fan here is not big enough to uh, be fitted here, so I'm going to fit it on the front, uh, blowing air in through, uh, well, over the motherboard. And I'm personally a big fan of these Arctic 80mm fan. I mean, they're quiet, they provide decent airflow, and they are relatively cheap. Alright, so we have our fan installed in the front right here. Something you want to uh, keep in mind when installing a fan is that it's not hitting any metal. Uh, like the mesh over here. Uh, trust me on this one, it's quite loud and it'll ruin your fan. Also, you want to make sure that your cables don't get into the fan because this could ruin your cables, ruin well, pretty much everything, uh, including your fan. Now, this fan has a 3 pin connector, and uh, the only other uh, fan connector is a 4 pin, but this is no problem. Just plug it in where it fits. Just like that. And then you'll probably want to cable manage uh, your cable as well, this cable right here. Now this uh, hot drive uh, cage was built for the case itself, so it pretty much just slides right in. If I can align these things, just like that. Easy as that. Now to power your hard drive, you want to find the one that says uh, SATA power cable. Uh, this is uh, connected to your power supply. And you want to find the uh, large L down here. Make sure it fits, and then you just want to plug it in, make sure it's tight, and just like that, there's power to your uh, hard drive. This right here is a SATA data connector, and it connects to one of these uh, SATA slots, uh, slots sorry, in your uh, motherboard. Just want to put it in, and the other one, the other end of the uh, SATA connector, uh, goes on the little L on your hard drive. Just like that, we both have uh, power and data to our uh, hard drive. Now in this particular build, I'm not adding a DVD or CD-ROM drive, but in case you're, you're going to do that, you pretty much just slide it in, lock it down. Uh, all this will is pretty self-explanatory. And then you just take a uh, another SATA power and another SATA data cable and connect it just the same as uh, if it was a hard drive. So once you get a hang of it, it's actually not that difficult. Now, connecting a Wi-Fi card uh, is also a pretty easy task. We have a, a medium-sized PCIe Express slot down here. Now, this thing will fit in any uh, PCIe expre uh, Express slot, but this one only has one that's kind of cut up, but I guess that'll be fine. 
and just like this. Yeah. And it's installed. Now when you're building a computer you want to be able to power it on. And for this build I just have this uh, for this build I just have a very simple power button. And it goes in the front panel panel connector down here. Um, if you're building one from a new case, uh, there'll be a whole lot of USB connectors and all that. Uh, you pretty much just have to uh, pick, up, pick up your motherboard manual and read it through. Um, there's pretty much no way around that since every motherboard is somewhat different from the others and some connectors are different. So it's a good idea to read through those things. But I'm just going to uh, connect this uh, button. So, finally, it is time to turn the computer on. Oh, would you look at that. Alright, YouTube, so the computer worked, uh, which is awesome. I did have some issues with the uh, power, but uh, after fiddling with it for about 15 minutes, I realized I had not turned the power on. So, learn from my mistake. Um, always make sure everything is turned on. Alright, so this is probably where those of you who were only interested in uh, getting, well, learning how to build a computer, you'll probably not watch anymore, but for those who want to know how well the Sempron 2650 performs, uh, stay tuned. Alright, so the AMD Sempron 2650 that is uh, in this system is a dual-core uh, APU clocked at 1.45 gigahertz. So it's definitely old and it's definitely not very powerful but uh, I'm quite excited to see how well it does. Now we're going to benchmark this using the uh, Counter-Strike Source graphic test, the uh, Half-Life 2 uh, graphics test, and uh, possibly Furmark if I can get it to work. If I can, you'll just have to uh, live with uh, the things I, uh, I figure out here. So stay tuned. I hope you're going to enjoy this next bit, because I certainly am. Alright, so we are currently running the Counter-Strike uh, Source Integrated Graphics Test and uh, obviously everything is set to low just to see uh, how many frames per second we can squeeze out of this uh, Sempron processor. The results are in and we got an average of 34.34 .34 frames per second which is actually not quite bad. Um, I honestly thought it'd do worse but uh, it's doing pretty well so far. Alright, so this is the uh, Half-Life 2 uh, graphics test. Uh, just like the Counter-Strike Source graphics test, everything is set to low. And we got 25.88 frames per second. Uh, it was lagging quite a bit in the beginning, so um, still quite a bit higher than I anticipated. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start downloading Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and meanwhile we're going to try out Furmark. So currently we are running the Fairmark preset uh, 720p uh, graphics test. So far we're running at 4 frames per second. Okay, so Fairmark uh, preset 720p uh, test is now done. We got a score of 168 and an average of 3 frames per second and a maximum of 5 frames per second. So uh, definitely pretty much what I uh, anticipated uh, not a very high score, but uh, still, it's okay for this uh, this CPU. So currently, we're playing Counter Strike Global Offensive, and as you can probably see, it is uh, not very playable. Um, this map is called the Towers, and of course, everything is set to uh, the lowest settings possible, but uh, still, it's uh, unplayable. Pretty much, it's very very laggy, as you can probably see. So I would uh, most definitely not uh, recommend this uh, processor for uh, for gaming. All right, so we are currently watching a YouTube video at uh, 1080p um, at a HD settings, and it's uh, playing it all right. It is not a. Uh, I'm not sure how to describe this. The picture doesn't seem uh, extremely fluent, but uh, it is able to play it without uh, major hiccups. So this is definitely not a uh, a bad CPU for watching YouTube videos if that's your thing. Um, let's try a 720p. So this is 720p, and as you can probably see, the uh, picture quality well, the uh, quality is uh, definitely not 1080p, but uh, the frames are definitely higher, um, if that makes any sense. It does look a lot better at 720p than it does 1080. 
Now keep in mind while using a YouTube here, uh, Steam is running in the background, so if we were not running Steam, we'd probably be able to watch uh, 1080p. Alright, let's try and open some more tabs just to see how well that goes. And we can definitely see a bit of a slowdown. I'm not sure how evident it is to you, but I can definitely feel the browser slowing down a little bit. But it's not too bad actually. Alright, so that was the AMD Sempron 2650. Uh, definitely not a bad CPU. Uh, for the price, it did very, very, very good actually. Now, this was the cheapest CPU I could find uh, that was new. Well, uh, you know, still in a box. When it comes to gaming, um, older titles and light gaming it can do, but uh, stuff like CSGO and beyond that, uh, it's definitely a no go. Now, if you're just planning on using this processor as your, you know, home computer, a browser, CPU, and writing emails and all that, it's all right. Uh, it's you can definitely feel that it's a bit a bit of a slowdown, but for the price, it's pretty hard to beat actually. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I should I certainly enjoyed making it for you, and thank you very much for watching.